What's happening, everybody? Boy, Big Brando, and welcome to another episode of Bullshin with Brando. First off, shout out to the homies from Fuck What They Say for this dope long sleeve and all the gear. Appreciate you guys. Um, but this episode right here is going to be talking about guerrilla style marketing and some tactics that I used to use, how I used them, why they worked, why they didn't work. A lot of people hit me up and say, I'm having a hard time marketing. I'm not good at social media. If you have an online store, you need social media. They kind of go hand in hand. But I understand sometimes people don't understand social media. Sometimes they want to do the traditional route of marketing um, out in person. And, and I get that. So um, this is, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I got this from when I used to sell music. But a way that I got a lot of my t-shirts into a lot of shops at the time when I was trying to get into the retail space, I personally don't agree with going to retail now. Um, I believe your online store is the best way to get your merchandise out to the customer instead of getting into a retail shop. But I understand people's goals or people's idea that they've made it is by being in a storefront and like a brick and mortar, like an actual store. And it's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I could talk a little bit about that, but a way that I used to do it was, um, and this is kind of like, a, I don't want to say a sleazy way of doing things, but it was an effective way of doing things was say if I wanted to get into a shop, right? It's a little mom and pop store. And I knew that they carried a lot of brands and how I was going to get in there wasn't necessarily by me bringing in a lookbook and saying, Hey, this is my spring line. Check it out. Here's a line sheet. Let's get some orders going because chances are little mom and pop shops don't go for that kind of shit. So what I would do is two weeks before I actually walked into that shop, I would send all my homeboys in there every day and just go in there, have them look around, have them ask about my brand. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Do you guys sell this brand? They're like, no, I never heard of it. This and that. And then next day comes, have a different homeboy come in there be like, boom, 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 looking around. Hey, do you guys carry this brand? No. What you're doing is you're building up the rapport of brand awareness with that shop owner, right? So now by the following week, they're like, man, I've been hearing about this brand every single day. Sometimes I send my homeboy in a different one wearing the shit and be like, hey, do you guys sell this brand? They get a good look at the shirt and they'd be like, no, we don't sell that. So now they're like, oh shit, there might be a need for this brand, right? So then the last few days before I show up is I would have my homeboys go in there and be like, hey, I heard you guys carry this brand and they'll be like, now nah, we don't or whatever. And I've had cases where the shop owner would be like, oh, we're all sold out, but we'll probably have some more in next week. Bullshit. Cause I had never even been in that store, but they were actually starting to be like, oh fuck, maybe we should carry this brand because that's the popular thing. I was creating the brand awareness within that shop to make it sound like it's something greater than it really was. Because back then they didn't even have no, uh, there was no social media. This is pre MySpace, pre all that shit. There was no social media out. So there's no way, real way of getting brand awareness out besides doing the shit live, right? I'm talking about like magazine ads and I'm talking about bus benches and stuff like that, like hard, tangible marketing tactics. And um, so what I was doing was I just kept sending my homeboys in and, and towards that end of the week of the second week, I just have multiple people going in there and just being like, hey man, I heard you guys are selling this shit. I heard you guys are selling this brand. I heard you guys are carrying this and the more they say no the more they keep hearing about the brand so boom monday comes around after that two weeks and i go in there and be like hey i'm a new brand i'm just starting now i'm in a few stores already i just want to know if you guys want to carry my brand now they're like oh shit there's a big need for this right supply and demand they understand that there's a big demand for this so that's when they take a chance on me they'll be like all right you know we'll give you this much or we'll do a consignment deal or we'll buy this much wholesale whatever you're Whatever you're doing, however you wanted to structure what you wanted out of that deal is where you would actually talk about it. These are the shirts I have to offer. This is when I could deliver the order. This is, you know, how much per piece it is. Or if you're doing a consignment deal, this is what I need from per piece. And a lot of ways that I would get, I didn't like consignment deals. I'd rather them buy wholesale. But the way I used to get them to go consignment to wholesale was when we agreed on some sort of consignment deal, I would send my homies in to buy the shirts right? So obviously I'm using my own money. This is a bad way of doing things, but it was effective was I would get the consignment deal. Let's say it was only for a dozen shirts, right? So a dozen shirts on the rack, send my homeboys in to buy them. Boom, boom, boom. They're buying them up, buying them up, sold out. Boom. I go to the next week, collect my check, 
and they're like, oh shit, those shits move fast. When can we get more? Then I'd be like, oh shit, I could do more, but let's talk wholesale or whatever it is. Now they know that people are coming in to buy. Now they take a chance on the actual wholesale deal. And the better thing for me was when you do consignment, you're, you put your stuff in the store, it has to sell, and then you collect the money at the end of the you know two weeks or month, whatever they give you, and whatever's left over you take with you, right? So that's giving them not much risk in their shop, but at the same time, they're not actually putting their money up to take a chance on their on your brand. So what you want to do is be able to sell them wholesale, so that way the risk is all theirs and not yours. So the way I would do it was send the homie in for the consignment shit and be like, oh yeah, I want to get that shirt, that new brand, whatever it is. They buy it, they get the money, I collect the money at the end for whatever I was owed and take the hit on, you know, the 30 five bucks or whatever um, I lost out on. After that, they see that they're flying off the racks or the shelves. Now they're interested in a wholesale deal because they know they can move something. All you're doing is basically artificially inflating the market and just making it seem like the shit's really popular when it's really not, but it was a good way for me to get into these stores and build it up that way. And then it was up to me to do the marketing and say, hey, you need to go to this store and buy my shirts whatever it was right so in that sense does this work all the time probably not would it work now who knows my goal isn't to be in retail anymore because i noticed that there's not that much money in retail for myself so that's why i stay out of it i think i get more money having an online shop than and fulfilling the orders myself because i keep more profit in my pocket because you got to remember when you're doing retail, if you're trying to get into somebody's shop, if it's not your own shop and it's somebody else's and you just want to get your stuff in there because it's a good look for the brand or it's good for you to say, find us at this store, blah, blah, blah. It makes you feel official or like a legit brand. It's cool. But you have to remember that all of that talk and all of that uh, um, marketing that you're doing for that store is you're doing all the hard work for that store. You're sending customers to that store. Whether they buy your shirts or not, you're sending all the customers there. So you're doing all this marketing. Why not just market your own online shop? You're doing all the legwork for them to send somebody to that store. Why not just send them to your own online store? That's how I feel now. The So many people are more comfortable with buying online than going into an actual store. There's some old school people out there that rather go into a store and buy it and have it that day. I get that. But online shop, it's the norm now. You know what I mean? Everybody does it. We all buy Amazon. We all have Amazon accounts. We're storing our credit cards online. We have all this shit going on where we feel better about buying online that for a brand owner or a home business, it makes more sense to do everything yourself and get the money and keep more money in your pocket than giving it to somebody else. And on top of that, if you're doing all the hard marketing for that shop just to get somebody to go to that shop, imagine you doing all that marketing for yourself and getting them to shop with you where you keep more of the profit. It makes more sense to do it that way. And that's why I don't believe in going into uh, retail and stuff like that, doing these consignment deals or buying wholesale. So I understand if you wanted to get into a retail space. I know a lot of brands out there want to do that. Um, so this is one way that you could, right? Another way that I used to do things like this when I was trying to get into retail was I would send people into these stores and I would have them look around and have them talk out loud amongst themselves around the owners or the person at the register or whatever it is talking about my brand and saying that this store doesn't carry that brand, stuff like that. But make it not obvious to where it's like, oh, this store doesn't carry, blah, blah, blah. But if they were just talking and saying, I don't see it in this store. I don't think they got it from here. I don't think they sell this brand here. That way they're like, oh shit, it's just building up brand awareness, right? That's all you're basically doing. If you wanted to get into that store, you go into that store and you make it known that they don't carry your brand. So that way they could be like, hey, what brand are you looking for? And then you tell them like, nah, they'll say, I never heard of that. But like, oh, that's cool. You know, it's a popular brand right now that everybody's wearing. We're just trying to find out where it is. We thought you guys carried it. If you do that and constantly keep doing that the same way do it for like two weeks three weeks you're building your brand awareness within that shop that's all it is right that way by the time you do approach them they're aware of what you do and what kind of shit that you have to offer so it makes the sale that much easier to the retail shop right you're trying to get into this mom and pop shop you've been sending your friends in there every day talking about oh do you guys carry this or i don't think they carry it and 
without them asking, as long as they keep hearing your brand name, they'll be aware of the brand once you bring it in. Then they'll be like, oh shit, there's a demand for it. That's all you're doing is artificially creating a demand for your brand. This right here is a, a real, like I said, it's a, a slime ball way of doing things, but it's almost like an easy way to sneak in and get the shit going. That's all it is, man. You have to be able to think outside the box when it comes to any kind of marketing, whether you're doing guerrilla style marketing, whether you're doing some kind of strategic marketing, you have to figure out a way to get your brand or your product into the faces of whoever you want um, to have, you know what I mean? And if your customer base goes to this retail shop all the time, it would benefit you, right? So say if you're trying to start some kind of skate brand and you want to get into this mom and pop skate shop, an easy way to do it is do something like this so where it's going to bring the awareness, right? You're going to have send people in there with your sticker of your logo on skateboards and stuff like that or throw gear on some of your friends to go into this skate shop so they see it create that brand awareness because if this is the shop that you want to get into and all of your potential customers shop here that's where you need to live obviously that's where you need to market and make it really that noticeable for the brand i mean for the uh, retail store's owner to see that there is a need for it that's what you're trying to convince them on because as a business owner or the retail shop owner the risk is on them right by letting you put your stuff in there and they don't know nothing about your brand so you have to make them feel comfortable with spending the money or even taking the chance on your brand how do you do that create the brand awareness remember supply and demand you have to create the demand for it in order to get that chance to be in that retail shop now as a business owner you have to be able to do that shit you have to be able to have the actual customer base to shop in that store if not then why are you even trying if you just started and you're trying to get into a shop that shop's not going to be like hey buy this shirt man this is a new brand out nobody does that they're going to be selling the shit that they know they can make money on so if you don't already have the following or you don't already have the attention around your brand when you're trying to get into retail it wouldn't benefit you all right i know this was a short one but I wanted to make this video to help anybody out that was thinking about getting into it. These are just some of the tactics that I've used personally and they worked for me. But like I said, I'm not that big into retail right now, so it might not actually work for a lot of you guys. You know, if you are trying to get into retail, I get it. But at the same time, I encourage everybody to do their own online store, promote your own online store and keep more money in your pocket. Stop giving it to other people. Keep the money in your own pocket if it's your own brand. All right. Catch you guys on next one, man. Yeah.